June 2025, L.T. McGinnis has been selected as the Early Contractor Engagement, ECE Contractor. No new buildings have been raised. Design and procurement continue with Antarctica NZ aiming to turn the key in the 2028-29 blizzards, with winds strong enough to tear metal sheets from buildings and wipe out visibility in an instant. And then there's the darkness. For months at a time, the sun won't rise. No light, no warmth, just a long, relentless night that challenges both human endurance and advanced technology. But even in those extreme conditions, the proposed base is meant to remain fully operational. If completed as designed, it would house over 100 scientists, engineers, and crew, supporting nonstop research that could shape the future of our planet. Professor Jordy Hendricks, chief executive of Antarctica New Zealand, stated, A technically challenging project like this provides an opportunity for all parties to bring their very best. Their experienced team has the highly technical capability and practical approach required. This base isn't just being designed to survive. It's meant to lead humanity into the unknown. According to the current plans, the interior will feature emergency bunkers, backup power systems, and medical stations, essentially forming a self-sufficient mini-city capable of operating even if The sustainability goals remain ambitious, but for now, they're mostly conceptual. Although the new Scott base is planned for one of the harshest environments on Earth, it's still just a vision, a bold architectural ambition that hasn't yet become a reality. If realized, it could stand as a triumph of sustainable engineering, showcasing how resilience and environmental responsibility might go hand in hand. It starts with the wind. Back in 2009, wind turbines were installed and currently supply around 11% of combined power needs of Scott Base and the neighboring McMurdo Station. These turbines are scheduled to be replaced by three large ones. In summer, when the sun returns and never sets, solar arrays are proposed to kick in, designed to capture every available ray, supplementing energy needs and reducing fuel dependency in this land of ice and extremes. Then there's water. Here, every drop 
counts. The design includes a sophisticated snow melt and closed loop water recycling system intended to minimize waste and maximize efficiency. While these systems are still in the planning phase, they represent a major step toward making the base more self-sufficient. And perhaps most impressively, under a proposed zero-waste policy, nothing is to be left behind. Even human waste would be securely stored and shipped back to New Zealand. Because in Antarctica, leaving no trace isn't just ideal, it's the law. This isn't just a green building. It's being designed for survival-grade sustainability. Every detail, from power generation to waste management, is being engineered for minimal environmental impact and maximum resilience. Every watt of power and every drop of water would be meticulously managed by a planned smart grid system, capable of balancing energy use, redirecting load during peak demand, and maintaining storage during whiteouts. Advanced insulation techniques and passive heat recovery systems are expected to reduce reliance on active heating, making the base a potential model for future climate-resilient construction. Even waste heat from critical operations would be repurposed, channeled through the station to warm living spaces or melt snow for utility use. Lighting, ventilation, and appliances are planned to be automated and responsive to human presence and occupancy levels. In short, although The proposed interior features include circadian lighting systems that simulate natural day-night rhythms to support mental health during the long Antarctic winters, when the sun doesn't rise for months. Virtual sky windows are designed to display tranquil natural scenes, easing the psychological toll of extreme isolation. Every element of the layout serves a vital purpose, to protect both body and mind in one of the most unforgiving environments on Earth. Externally, the base is designed to be elevated, a deliberate architectural choice that allows polar winds to pass underneath, preventing dangerous snowdrift accumulation that could otherwise bury the structure. In Antarctica, elevation is an aesthetic, it's survival. The design also prioritizes thermal efficiency, Thermal bridges have been strategically eliminated to trap internal heat and reduce energy loss, critical in sub-zero storms where frostbite is just minutes away. Beneath it all, seismic foundations are engineered to absorb the subtle but constant movements of Antarctica's shifting ice shelf, allowing the structure to flex rather than crack under pressure. And the air? According to design plans, it'll be tightly regulated by a smart HVAC system, capable of filtering, circulating, and adapting based on indoor carbon dioxide levels, humidity, and even crew routines. This isn't just a heating system. It's meant to act as a life support unit, preserving not just comfort, but survival itself. Designed by New Zealand's Jasmax and Hugh Broughton Architects, the new Scott base is, at this stage, a theoretical prototype, not a completed facility. These are all the design features. None have been implemented on site yet. If completed as envisioned, it could redefine survival architecture and even shape the future of off-world habitats. But for now, it remains a bold concept waiting for its first bricks and bolts. This is Future Builds, where we explore not just what's built, but what could be. See you in the next one.